on in. This is Home Keepers. <laughs> and we are starting here today. You know, kitchen's everybody's favorite room, isn't it? And I, I've heard that, you know, when you go shopping for a house, that woman has to like the kitchen. Uh, really, the reason we're starting out here today is because I'm on my third interview with Heidi Janssen as we talk about Common Core. I sure hope you uh, got to see the last two shows. And we're a little bit pinched for time today, so, so just start in the kitchen. And so I want to welcome you and be sure that you just hang around so that you can absolutely hear everything that uh, Heidi has to say about this new system that's coming into our public schools. It's very important to be informed and then to uh, be involved. So that's what we've been talking about. And if this is your first time to see homekeepers, we don't usually start in the kitchen, but come on in anyway, we're glad to have you. And we're making what we call Stephanie's cake today, and it's, it's one of those. We keep finding these that we totally wonder who was the person who thought to put all those things together. Yes, this is a pecan praline cake with a butter sauce, so good for you. <clears throat> no. <laughs> So I have a butter pecan cake mix that I have um, put in the bowl. I have four eggs. I have a three quarter cup of oil and I have a cup of half and half and I'm gonna get this all mixed up. And then, are you ready for this? The most important ingredient, we are going to put the coconut pecan frosting right into the cake. That's why we were wondering who thought right of this. Right <clears throat> into the cake. No doubt someone with insomnia. Oh. Someone who said, this sounds really delicious. Do you, do you ever suffer from insomnia? <laughs> Not very often. I'm a pretty good sleeper. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a pretty good well, sleeper. Well, it's awful. My sister really suffers, and I feel so bad for her because... You know, the few times I haven't been able to turn my brain off, that's mm -hmm. kind of the problem. Yeah, I really have to work at shutting down. And then if there, if I go a couple mm -hmm. nights without sleep, I get mm -hmm. sick. Like, I really need my sleep. My body really needs to sleep. Well, we've been talking about public school education. And I think uh, <clears throat> what the parents need to do more than ever, they, we as parents should have always been real involved, oh, yes. uh, but now more so than ever, just stick your nose in there and find out what's going on. And it's more than, it's easier than ever now to be involved because yeah. they have they have so much, like my daughter um, has something online, it's called Focus. I can check her grades, I can check yeah. her attendance, I can talk to the teachers. I mean, there it, it's, there's no sense in not being involved. And also, um, Liberty University, which was founded by Jerry Falwell, one of the absolute greatest schools in the nation. Uh, they have an online now from K through 12. Mm -hmm. That would be a really good education. Well, if Florida, be, uh, Florida Virtual School, they have that here. You can go, you can do homeschooling at home through the public school system, no charge. Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, there's that a lot pecans. of things that, because all the kids aren't exactly the same mm -hmm. at all. and. I keep going and maybe the viewers get tired of me quoting it, but it's so powerful where I believe it's Solomon said, train up a child in the way that he should go. Mm -hmm. Now my parents were the old fashioned kind and they said we treat them all exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and none of us were alike. <laughs> anyway, I'm making the, the vanilla making sauce, sauce kind of, and it's all it is is two tablespoons of butter and um, a regular can of sweetened condensed <laughs> milk. That's so what that good is. for you. But um, I don't know. We've just been directed to all these um, different recipes. We often call them weird. This one sounded so decadent to me. This one just sounded like, you know, you want to impress your friends. You she want to take a great. She found it into my office yes. with that recipe. So we have to make this. So we've, <laughs> we've renamed it Stephanie's recipe. So I'm that's what it looks like. Are you going to put the pecans in there? Uh, yeah. Okay. But, uh, before we run out of time, let's... Yes. Oh, I'm going to taste this. Uh-huh. <laughs> no question. So this has three ingredients and of course our recipes are free. Yep. You can email us. That's the best way. But if you don't have a computer, write to me. You can go on my we'll Facebook page. 
Stephanie's fan club. Oh my, my, my. Mm. Here we go. Now that's not a vanilla sauce. It doesn't even have vanilla in it, mm -hmm. but it tastes like a good vanilla sauce. There you go. Yeah, just there use you go. your spoon. I'll just use my spoon. Yeah. OMG. This is a, um, <laughs> this sauce yeah. recipe is a good one to have. I can see where that would work on a lot of things. Let's turn that off. So mm -hmm. You don't want me to burn me? No. Mm. <laughs> it's it's decadent, isn't mm -hmm. it? Okay, the only way you can have this if you oh, <laughs> I hear Call angels yourself. singing. <laughs> Calm yourself. <laughs> okay, there's going to be a notarized agreement come with this one. Oh, so you have to promise that you only get a two-inch square. That is one of the best things I've ever tasted in my whole life. Well, <laughs> I might cry. You, <laughs> <laughs> girl, you, you picked a good one in that it tastes marvelous. Oh, I don't recommend it for everybody. That's really, really, but, really, really good. Okay, uh, was that just the cake mix and the? Oh, it had eggs in it, it had and eggs, half it had and half oil. It had half and half. And the, and the frosting in yeah. the cake. I don't have the words to describe it. So oh, there are the words. Say. It's heavenly. But, but the information is coming up on your screen if you'd like to have it. We'll be glad to send it to you. But um, please listen to what Heidi has to say today. We really want to inform you because it's your children that are at stake. So stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. All right, I'm continuing with my guest, Heidi Janssen. And I had a, I had an uncle who was Swedish, yeah. and uh, his family, you know, and all, and it kind of takes me back there, mm -hmm. and uh, especially the way his parents could talk. So, uh, I think of that every time I say Johnson. <laughs> My inclination to say Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you've been with us for the last two programs because Heidi has been my guest, as we are exploring Common Core and it is an educational system that kind of the federal government tried to put under the radar, but we've had some really smart moms like Haiti, Heidi, and there's other people who are really trying to warn the parents, and uh, so we're trying our best to uh, get you interested in it, and especially if you or a mom, a grandmom, or whatever, uh, get that antenna up there and attend meetings, ask questions, and all, because this is to the detriment of the children. I say that without any, mm -hmm. any hesitation. Uh, you know, Heidi, one thing that scares me is that from kindergarten, they start collecting data on that child mm -hmm. that's gonna follow them till they die. Yep. And it pigeonholes them because they will say from kindergarten to 12th grade, mm -hmm. you're qualified to be a truck driver. That's it. You know, that's it. Yeah. That child might. Um, it reminds me, I was um, in a store the other day and uh, purchasing something. It was a department store. I handed my credit card and she said, I'll need your driver's license. And I, I thought that was odd. Mm -hmm. But I gave it to her and she's behind the counter. She's typing like crazy. I said, are you typing my name? And she said, well, yes. I said, I don't want anything. I don't want any mail. I don't, I mean the gall, but this is what's happening. Yeah, this is, take it from you. We I don't. know, and I'm, I'm amazed, and I'm amazed at these, uh, I've had this happen several times. When you pay for something and the clerk would say, and, and what was your phone number? I said, I don't give my phone number out. But I've watched people stand there and give them all mm -hmm. that and they are collecting, well, I'm far enough along in life, it's not going to probably affect me too much, but those kindergartners, it will. It sure will. So actually, the um, our president has a new website and it's called the Education Dashboard. And so in that, he actually stated that his ideal 
is that children must be in an educational environment. Young children, pre-kindergarten, must be in an educational environment. Is this our President Barack Obama? Mm -hmm. Yes, and so his intent is cradle to grave. Mm -hmm. Data on them, mm -hmm. there's a cloud. And who, who holds that cloud of data and information, their ideal is, he, this is the whole design of the Common Core, mm -hmm. is that there's a data cloud. And so if there's a school in California, and then you have a child from Florida who relocates to California, all they have to do is go and grab the information from the cloud, and boom, they have everything they need on that child from cradle to that point in their life. That is so creepy. I, I, I don't have the vocabulary. And they think it's terrific. They think that that is the biggest selling point. That's what they tried to sell the parents on. Well, if we have children that relocate, but you know what the percentages of children who locate from one state to the other? And, and teachers, if I ask them, how many children do you have that are brand new that you need to catch up because they came from another state where the standards might have been a little different? Well, maybe one or two. I said one or two out of how many? 20, 22? Some states, like Florida, is a larger transient state. We've got more influx. People are moving down more. But when you talk about Minnesota or Montana, or how about North Dakota? Do you have a lot of Floridians that move to North Dakota, and they should have the same standards? This, this was so interesting. Um, I don't know if, if our superintendent of schools uh, in Pasco County, Kurt Browning, knew how profound it was that he said this. When he was referring to the new, new assessment, end of year assessment, that. Florida has contracted with the American Institutes of Research for the next six years a $220 million contract to do, develop and assess our students. Um, and we are taking the test questions from Utah. Oh, good. And we are, <laughs> Florida is renting their test questions for, get ready, $5.4 million. Renting? Renting their test questions. So Utah's making money off of Florida. So our taxpayers are paying Utah can't make it up. Isn't that great? So Kurt Browning said, the Utah-based field testing also troubled Pasco County Superintendent Kurt Browning. I will assure you, our population of English as a second language students is much higher than Utah's. So why would we think that our standards should be the same as well? Well, doesn't this completely wipe out the, the individuality, the personality of the state? Yes. It's just everybody's cookie cutter, uh, whether you're Montana or Florida or Colorado, where I'm from, all these states have so much to give, definite personalities, which uh, should be evident in the citizens. That's what makes the United States of America. Unique. Mm -hmm. So how about your parents, your local parents, who go to their principal, first they go to the teacher and ask questions about the curriculum. Mm -hmm. The teacher says, well, you must ask our principal. You go to the principal and the principal says, well, that's a district issue, you should go to the district. You go to the district and the district says, my hands are tied, it comes from, uh, it comes from our State Board of Education, we cannot do anything, we can't make any changes. Mm -hmm. And the State Board of Education says, that's a piece of legislation that came down from the federal government. We have no voice. Mm -hmm. The parents have no voice in what our children are being taught. And America was based on we the, the people. people. We the people. Um, I, in case our viewers haven't seen the last two programs, I want to remind them that Heidi is a mom who discovered all this stuff when her son brought home a math problem that she couldn't solve. And I was asking her earlier before we started, I said, can you describe just describe the problem, and she said she thought she could, so okay. try it. Okay, so let's, let's uh, we, standard algorithms in math. What? what? An, an algorithm is basically a formula. It's I have never heard that word. <laughs> it's I have eight great-grandchildren, okay. and I've heard a lot of words. <laughs> so your standing, uh, standard multiplication algorithm would be you stack 24 times 42. Right, so 24 times 42, we all know what that looks like, 24 up above and 42 below, or vice versa. And so then you have a line and you have the times and then you just go and you take this number right here, the two from the 42, and you multiply times the four and you multiply times the two and you bring that down and then you multiply the four times the, the, 20, the, two, the four and, then, and you bring that down and then you add them together. You just move it over a place and you add them together. It's simple. 
that was not what my son was supposed to be doing. His strategy was supposed I to. I did it that way. <laughs> yes, I did too. His was to to multiply the ten spot and then to multiply the yes exactly we're talking about ten spots hundred spots and all I'm afraid I'm hearing the televisions turn off <laughs> in any case he was not willing he really was scared to to look at it the way I was teaching him because he said no that's not how we're supposed to learn it in school but it was basically breaking it down to where it was much more cumbersome and it made the problem this long as opposed to this long and done and so I was like Titus what are you doing and he said we're supposed to itemize it out all over here like this and I said but look can you see where you're making mistakes it made the margin for mistakes so much greater when he had all of this instead of compact like what so, we learned. So uh, 24 times 42, just getting the answer isn't enough. No. Because if you got it the way I learned it, then doesn't count. They want them to have a deep understanding of where the numbers come from. So then my fourth grader, again, was expected to draw 24 dots by 42 dots and draw them all out and then count them up. That was one of the strategies. That's insane. And I said, that is the equivalent of counting on your fingers and toes. Uh -huh. No, but then they get the big picture and they understand where all the numbers come from. And I said, so what happens when you get to 2,004 times 450? Is he supposed to write 2,004 and 450 and then count them all up? What is that? What? There are moms out there that are concerned, and of course, you are here because you're a mom who, who became concerned. What avenues do parents have? Mm. Well, um, first of all, they need to be vocal. I have heard some parents from some parents who said, well, my son or my daughter, they weren't affected, so uh, we're not gonna pay it any mind. This is going to affect our entire society. We won't even talk about right now about the lack of cursive and what cursive writing has to do and that oh Florida, that's gone is it uh, well florida brought it back they're bringing it back well they text all the time i know but i taught my son cursive because he was having an issue with writing his mm -hmm. horrendous handwriting but the parents must speak up they have to go to their principals they have to go to the teachers the teachers really sadly to say yes. the teachers are the bottom of the totem pole they are yeah. bearing the brunt of it they are mm -hmm. on the front lines and not only the most unfair thing that's happening in the state of florida right now is the fcat rights which all fourth graders had to take which tested them on their writing they were given something called a writing prompt which is a paragraph that basically says um, describe this this and this and they can write a narrative or they can write an expository um, so therefore they will be tested on that and it's graded by a human being well if you look across the state of Florida the FCAT writes scores this last year awful awful a schools drop down to B or C because their fourth graders did Isn't so that poorly. subjective though yeah and so Pam Stewart, our commissioner of education, said she sees nothing wrong with the scores, even though the superintendents collectively went to her and said, there is something gravely wrong with these FCAT rights scores. We ask for you to revisit them and to, uh, to, to really look at them and regrade them. And she said, no, we think they're fine. So do you know what, ha what is hanging on that? Teachers pay, merit pay, whether or not they did a good job they're penalized. Oh, that's scary. School grades are dropped down, which means less funding, possibly, um, or less desirable to, for, for people to want to put their children there. And it is detrimental to the child then who has that on their record. So my son, who's gifted on the FCAT, reading and, and math, the highest score that you can get is a five. So on both of those, he scored a five. I was very proud of him. However, on the rights, FCAT rights, he scored a three, less than proficient. Tell me how that happens. Yeah, because there's not a right or wrong. Well, there's it's, not an answer. it's subjective to their rubric. Whatever they call a rubric is how they That's grade it. That's an opinion, it. though. It is. So I am going to ask them to show me his actual test. So I've gone to the, to the state, um, for their Department of Assessment, and they said you should be able to get a copy of his test, and I will. I want to look at it. This is making me crazy. 
Yeah, because up to that point, he did great in class. He did wonderfully. Uh, another point bef uh, before we run out of time is that this puts everybody on the same level. Uh, just actually earlier today, I did a show with a lady uh, has some tremendous material for learning disabilities, oh. which um, is not a really beautiful term, but thank God they at least identify these things. and and. But you can have a child there where it's very difficult and they, they might have a number of problems that, that could hold them back. Mm -hmm. Or they have children like yours, I understand yours, or your, their IQ is way up mm -hmm. there. And they're expecting the same outcome? Yeah. See, this is where the teacher, Yes. Uh, I think you look through history, you'll see where a teacher made all the difference, difference. in the world. That's right. Even in our greatest leaders, mm -hmm. some of them who had some what we would call learning disabilities, because I believe that teaching and nursing is an absolute ca calling. Yeah. And you can be in the hospital and you can know, you can know in very short amount of time who, the nurse who's called, mm -hmm. and also the teachers. The yeah. teachers that are putting in their time are those that are called. and they've. And they have knocked out that calling for the teacher. Yeah. She has, or he has, really, uh, didn't teachers used to do their own lesson plans? plans. Yes, yeah. now they're totally dictated to. So they're overwhelmed with trying to implement this all in such a short amount of time that they not only have to learn the standards, because not every teacher is qualified to unpack those standards. They're so so narrow that you have to have somebody who's qualified to know what that language is to unpack them. So our county is actually writing curriculum now, but if you have a bookend here and a bookend here of your standards and your test, what do you think drives the middle? The curriculum is driven by both of those. Otherwise, you're gonna halt everything in January and start teaching to the test, mm -hmm. which is what they've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Now they want to make it Common Core aligned, so everything's great. But when you're talking about people with disabilities, our children, those precious kids that are mainstreamed in the classroom, mm -hmm. they may be autistic and they have what they call an IEP, which is an individual education plan. They are expected to meet the standards just like every other child. There is no exception. And a gifted child, there's nothing that pushes them past yeah. the point to actually help them to persevere. So for a gifted child, their brain is not pushed, and per if they don't learn to persevere here, when they get to high school or college, then they're mm. gonna reach that point that their peers reached when they were in grade school, and then they're gonna give up and be and just gonna say, I'm, I'm stupid, I'm not smart anymore. Yeah. It, it is absolutely frightening, and it's time for people to really wake up and get involved, because I still believe in we the people. I, I really believe that, you know, in my lifetime, and I've got a bunch of great-grandchildren now, I've watched at times when we the people woke up from their sleep, but I'm not all that optimistic right now because of the situation in our nation today. Mm -hmm. We have just a couple minutes, but uh, how will this affect homeschools? This is what scares me, just looking down the road. Um, so many times, kids have gone from the kitchen table into Harvard. Yeah. Uh, homeschooling, I believe in 100%. I've had great, great uh, guests on, and even the, the young people are in it. Mm -hmm. they, they are sharp. And, but would the time come, say, but you, you didn't pass all these little tests here, so you can't get in my college? Well, here's the thing. In Orlando, every year, there's a homeschooling right. uh, convention for Huge. homeschoolers. Huge they sold out this year. They were absolutely brimming over, packed with people homeschooling their kids, mm -hmm. wanting curriculum to homeschool. I've coined a phrase called co-schooling. I cannot homeschool. Mm -hmm. I have another calling in my life as mm -hmm. well. I can't dedicate that time. But homeschoolers, my feeling is that because homeschoolers are going to be so further ahead than their peers in, their, in classes, that they're not gonna have an issue with those standardized tests. Well, uh, at college entrance exams. I think they're going to fly through right. those with flying colors. Oh, let's end on a <laughs> good note. But uh, Heidi, I want you to come back. I, I'd like to keep this subject before the viewers. And um, 
we could do it every day for a <laughs> few months and I think not run, run out of uh, things and good information to give out. So uh, watch for it. But thanks for being on the last, uh, this makes three programs. I really wanted to give the viewers a jump start on it and uh, we'll, we'll keep it out there before you. Right now though, stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Well, that was the third interview that I had with Heidi Janssen. Hope you saw the other two programs because I feel that we were just bringing you something that is so very, very important. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing that word of truth. But I'd like to pull out just the top of that scripture, just a study to show thyself approved and to be informed, especially on something as important as the education of your child or your grandchild. And so just thinking about the importance of it, I would again like to remind you that we are viewer supported. And if you appreciate the fact that we can bring this kind of a program to you and give you some information that maybe you've never ever even heard before, and you, uh, you listen to the news and you do try to stay informed. Uh, this is something that's a little bit under the radar, but it's so very, very important. And so if you would send us an offering, my, that would be appreciated. Uh, you can, you know, if you like to use your credit card, you can use the 800 number, which is 1-800-229-0059, or write to me at Homekeepers, and that's Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. It would be so appreciated. I truly believe that the Lord guides us when uh, we can bring certain guests to you. I certainly believe that about Heidi. And so in order uh, for us to keep going and, and keep bringing these guests to you, uh, the cost is very, very high, very large. I've often said that there's nothing in television that's a few hundred dollars, everything's a few thousand dollars. and uh, but the Lord owns it all, doesn't he? He's just asking his people to release some of it. I hope you'll do that. And I hope you'll join me next time, friend, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers. 